we're getting places, we can actually go and type a nickname and it'll be stored in our database now as a client with a unique ID. But here's a problem. The unique ID right now is actually going to be the unique ID we get from our socket. So this is the unique ID. And let me just try and prove that to you. I'll go to the database and you'll see the ID sitting right here with the unique nickname of Lars. So that's perfectly fine. But what will happen if we go and we actually restart our front end right here and want to join us Lars again because it was a mistake. I didn't want to do that. I want to keep my old nickname. It works perfectly. When we actually do the refresh, we disconnect, delete the client, then we reconnect with a new unique ID, meaning that Lars will be there with a new ID. Perfect, why are you complaining about that? Well, I'm actually not complaining, but let me show you a problem right here. What if the backend restarts, not the front end? What if the backend actually restarts for some reason? The problem is that when this restarts, it'll actually also give you a new unique identifier, but it won't clean out the database. Let me try and show you the problem. The database is not cleaned, so the unique ID is still here. But notice down here, it just got a new unique ID that doesn't match that ID in the client and the database. So it doesn't know now that Lars is actually this client right here who's logged in. So if I send messages right now, it would think that it was actually instead this guy who sent the messages because that's the new socket ID. So let me try and just refresh the page and put Lars back in here. You'll notice it doesn't know anymore that I am the same user. It'll say, uh uh, this guy has a new unique ID right here. And right now, because I did the refresh, it actually got a new ID again. So it'll say, no, 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 I don't know that you are this unique identifier right here. So I can't find you, but the last nickname is already taken. It just doesn't match your ID. So we have a real problem right here. A server restart will actually break our setup. How do we fix that? Well, the first thing I want to fix this lesson is I want to be able to see when a server is actually down. Let me try and show you another issue with this and just shut down the server right here. I'll shut it down. I won't do anything. I'll just refresh the page again and I'll start typing. I'll say last. Now nothing happens because we can't see anywhere that the server is down right now. That's annoying. I want to see if the server is down. So let's start by fixing that this lesson and next lesson we'll fix the other part so that we can update our database and give it the correct ID if the server restarts and we still use the same nickname. I know again that maybe we shouldn't use this as the unique identifier, but it's a good way to prove a few points and then later in the system we'll add some real users for the system with login and everything. Good. So we're going to dive into the front end actually to solve this. So step one is Let's jump into our front end code. So in our front end code, we'll make a new listener right here that we can listen to. And we'll say listen for connect, meaning that it's going to connect to the backend. And we'll also make another one called listen for disconnect. Listen for disconnect like this. There we go. So now we have these two methods available. Now we need to figure out how we can listen for connections and disconnect. So we'll go to our documentation right here on socket IO. And there you can actually go into the client instance right here. And there you can see you can listen for connect or disconnect. Sweet. Let's start listening for those two. We'll listen for connect and we'll listen for disconnect. But actually, I'm not satisfied knowing that I connected. I want to get the ID of the socket that was just connected. So what I'll do is I'll do another dot right here. I'll do a pipe to say I want to change something with the data before it's returned. I want to actually map the data and return something differently. I want to return a number. Now, in my case, what I want to return is actually the ID of the socket that just connected. And you can actually get that by saying return right here and say this dot socket. And then you can say dot iOS socket dot ID. By doing this, it'll actually return the ID of the current socket that is connected. And by the way, if you didn't know the pipe of my our map right here, it just says take whatever you're getting back and map it into something else and return the ID instead of just right now it's going to return nothing if I don't add this. I'll do the same down here actually for my beautiful disconnect. There we go. Now we have them both sending the information back about who is actually connected with this ID. The next thing I want to do is I want to go into the chat app component right here. And there I want to actually start listening for these guys, just like we did with the other listeners. So I'm going to do the same thing right here. I'm going to both listen and subscribe. So let's start by just taking the service. I'll do this dot chat service dot listen for connect. I'll do it at pipe again, like we did before. And in the pipe, I'll take until I'll do this dot unsubscribe. So we are doing exactly the same thing like we're normally doing here with the listeners dot unsubscribe. Now again, there are ways to do this differently, but I don't feel it's necessary right now. I can still read this code. So I'm going to
play around with that later on. Sweet, so now we have that available. Now with this available, we can actually now subscribe and get the actual ID that was just connected. So we'll just do a console log with that ID for now, just to show you that it's running. I'll console log the ID and I'll put in that ID that was just created right here and just do a semicolon there as well. Sweet, now I'll do the exact same thing when we disconnect. There we go for disconnect. Sweet, and we'll lock the ID again and it'll be disconnect ID. Now I probably have to spell this correct. Let's just go and create it. Listen for disconnect. There we go. That looks more correct. Sweet. So now we have that available and we can actually listen for both connect and disconnect in our setup. Let's just try and save this and see what actually happens now. We'll go back to our front end and we can actually now see if we look at the console right here. You can see that if I right now I'm not connected. So let's just try and connect to the server. I'll just launch this backend server again. Let's just try and go back and you'll notice now it'll actually pop up with the ID that I got just connected with. Sweet, so now the front end knows that I connected. What else can I do? I can also go and I can actually disconnect by shutting down the back end again. And I'll just go back here and you'll notice now it's disconnected ID is undefined, meaning that we are not connected anymore. So that's nice. I can actually now use this ID to see if I can connect it to the back end or not. Let's try and jump into our front end code again and I'll go to the chat component HTML. I'll just make it simple this lesson and just say ng if, and here I wanna have like the ID now, so I'll just make a socket ID right here, and I wanna say if that socket ID is available, let's just print it. Now, to get that socket ID, I need to kind of go and create it inside my TypeScript file. There we go, so it's right here, and I'll make it as right now just a number, actually a string, like this, and I'll also say it might be undefined. There we go. And then the final thing I need to do is just to, instead of console locking my socket ID all the way down here, I actually wanna save it inside that ID right there. So I'll say this.socket ID equals the ID we're getting when we are either connecting or disconnecting. There we go. Now I'll also do the same for the other one down here. Say if we're connecting or disconnecting, change this. Now the final thing I wanna do is I wanna go back to the HTML and say if there's not a socket ID, I just wanna print you are not connect. And if there is a socket ID right here, I just want to print that socket ID. So I'll just put it somewhere right now. I'll just put it here in the in the hello client nickname. I'll just also add the socket ID right here in the end to present that when you're locked in, you have a socket ID. Sweet. Let's try and have a look at our actual application right now. So you're not connected right now because there's no server running. Let's try and go back to the backend, start the server. There we go. Let's see what happens. This should go away after a few seconds. Boom, we are connected. Let's put in our nickname right here. Let's say Lars and go into the backend. It's already used. Let's do Lars2. So now you can actually see both my name right here, including that ID that I have available right now. Let's try something funny. Let's actually try and shut back, shut the server back down like this. See what happens. You are not connected. Uh-oh, let's try and start it up again. And now notice what happens is I'll actually get a different ID. Slam, I got a new ID. So with this information, now we can actually both change our front end to show if we're connected or not connected, but we can also use this to kind of change our database if needed when a server restarts in the backend. So that's it for this lesson. Next lesson, we'll dive into how we can actually use all of this great code we just made. So now you can actually both listen for connection and disconnection, and you can even see the ID that connected or disconnected. That's it for this lesson. See you next time.